glad to have you uh, join us. Thank you so, for being so faithful and continuing to join in. We are both in person and online in some capacity. You know, the way is everywhere, right? And I'm just so glad, y'all, I've been talking to a camera for the last year and a half. I'm so happy just to have some people, even if it's just a handful of us and some people to talk to. Um, we uh, just want to uh, start our time. I really, really believe God has a word for us. And I really believe that God is doing something in the season as we are uh, reimagining, we're reclaiming, we're restoring. We're doing all these things because we believe that this is a time of healing. Amen. Uh, we've been through so much collectively that this is a time where we want to heal collectively. We've all been through collective trauma. We, now it's time for us to heal. We wanna reimagine what it looks like to heal, amen? And if you have not, if you did not join Bible study on Wednesday, go back and watch it. Pastor Mike is on fire right now. I mean, we are really going in, in depth about healing. And so let's just take a moment, let's center ourselves um, even though, let's give it up for our AV team that got us back up again, Mike and Al, we thank God for you, but now my iPad doesn't want to work, so it's okay, we gonna go, we gonna go in, in Jesus' name. Let's just center ourselves, I don't know where you're watching this, or whether you're at home, whether you're at your car, you're at your job, uh, let's just take a moment just to center ourselves and just to um, prepare ourselves for what God wants to say to us, amen. So Lord, we just want to thank you. We give you praise, we give you glory, we give you adoration. God, we just wanna pray that you would just bless our time together. God, as we dive into your word, Lord, that you would do a new thing in our hearts. God, I'm praying uh, for everyone who's watching this, Lord, wherever they are, even for our brothers and sisters who are incarcerated, God, we pray for those who are locked in cycles of violence and are in the gun violence that's going on in our communities. God, we're praying for the for the pandemic, God, and that you would just uh, do it, do a work, God. We thank you. We thank you that you're going to talk to us today. We love you and we give you all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and thank God. Amen and thank God. All right, all right. Y'all, it's an exciting time to be in the kingdom. Did you know that? It's an exciting time to be alive. It's a very exciting time to be in there. I know we can look at the news and we'll see everything that goes around us. Um, it's an exciting time to be in the kingdom of God. And um, I don't know if you've ever uh, been at work or you've been on teams or you've been at a, on a job. Have you ever did this thing where you guys did an icebreaker and you kind of do this icebreaker about hidden talents? You ever do that before? Maybe you're at a job or you're at, on a team or and, and they go around and you got to try to guess the hidden talents of people ah. or people will tell you what they do. And it's like very interesting when you do that, when you only know someone from work or you only know them from school, uh -huh. or you only know them, when you, when you start hearing things that they do, it becomes very, um, thank you, it becomes very uh, interesting. You'll be like, you know, you're, you're usually like, okay, Bobby, I see you over here in a rock band. Okay, Julie, you played a xylophone, I had no idea. Okay, Jim from accounting out here, the Domino's champ. I don't know. We just, we tend, it's a surprise when we only know people in one dimension. Yes. Yes. And then we find out they have other sides to them, right? And I think that's how we do God sometimes. I think that we only know God in one dimension. I think we only know, sometimes we only know God as the, you know, the God I met at church. The God I met at camp back when I was little, or the God who just helps me out in tight spots, and I don't really know. You know, we tend to only know God in one dimension, kind of based on our experiences. But do y'all know that God is so vast? Uh -huh. Come on, I want, we're, we're reimagining. I want, I want us to reimagine. God is so vast. Like, God can't be put into one category. Uh -huh. God is, God is multifaceted. Yes, yes. God is the uncreated one. Just take a minute just to think about that. The uncreated one. 
God is the one that we can't even put God in a box. The otherness of God. God is so other. There's not even a category for God. God is so holy that God is other. Can you imagine this? We, we kind of put God in these boxes. You know, that's why he told Moses. Moses like, hey, who, who, who should I say is sending me? He's like, you know what? Just tell him I am. Don't even bother. Don't even bother to try to, to put on all these adjectives. Just tell him I am and whatever you need me to be, that's what I'll be. It's the I amness of God. Come on, sit in that. The I amness of God. Uh, he was like, don't even, don't even bother to tell him my name. You, 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 can't even, you can't even fathom these problems. So while we are in this time as a church family of, of reclaiming, and restoring, and reimagining, and healing, I want to talk about restoring our view of God as a healer. Restoring our view of God as a healer. Come on, somebody say, God is a healer. Come on, say it again from your soul. Say, God is a healer. Now, I know I just felt when we said that a lot of us just got tight a little bit. I could feel it. I felt it over there. We get a little tight. We, we get a little tight when we talk about God as a healer. And I get it. I get it. Because, you know, we've talked to people who have gone through disappointments. A lot of us get jaded. We've asked God for a healing. We've prayed for loved ones. We've, we've had, we are, some of us are living with pains and conditions. Is that you? Are you living with a pain or a condition or you've been diagnosed with something and you are really trying to wrestle with what does it mean that God is a healer? I mean, I prayed, I fasted, I begged God, I cut deals with God for my loved one not to die and they still die. So how can you tell me that God is a healer? Sometimes we question, am I alone? Are y'all with me? Has anybody else done this? I've done it. We pray for healing for somebody, and then we just like, man, what happened there? Well, today, I want to invite us to restore our view of God as a healer. You know, um, sometimes we just need a renovation. Y'all, I, I love HGTV shows. Is anybody else with me? I'm currently binging, love it or list it. You can't tell me nothing about Hillary Farr. Like, this is what, so sometimes, a lot of times in our, in our, in our situations, we need a, a renovation of what God wants to do to, you know, like some houses are stuck in the 80s. Some need a new bathroom. Now everybody wants an open kitchen concept. Like a lot of these things, we tend to have an out outdated view of God at times. We have that view that, of God that we had back in 1980 or back when we were little. We need a renovation. Come we need now. a freshen up. We need, we need to, some of us need a complete gut job of what we, how we view God. And some of us just need a little freshen up. You just need to paint some cabinets. But no, no, it, no matter what it is, it's time for us to restore our view of God. Are y'all with me on this? We're going to restore. We're going to journey together. Um, I'm reading today from Exodus 15. This is such a good passage. Exodus 15, 22 through 26. I think y'all are going to like this. Exodus 22 and 26. I'm sorry. Exodus 15, 22 through 26. Y'all there? If not, it's on the screen. Here we go. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea. They went out into the wilderness of Shur. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. Now, when they came to Mara, they could not drink the waters of Mara, for they were bitter. Somebody say bitter. bitter. Therefore, the name of the place, the name of it was called Mara. And the people complained against Moses, saying, what shall we drink? So he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree and cast it into the waters, and the waters were made sweet. Come on now, sweet water. 
Um, he says, there he made a statute and an ordinance for them. And there he tested them. Somebody say tested them. Tested them. And said, if you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of, these, of the diseases on you which I brought on the Egyptians. And check this out. For I am the Lord who heals you. I am the Lord who heals you. May God bless God's word. So let me just give you a quick context of what just happened here. The children of Israel had just gotten set free from, from Egypt. They literally just crossed the Red Sea. Like they were in, they keep having these water problems, right? Like they just came to a body of water. They were trapped, nowhere to go. God made a way, opened the sea. They didn't even think something like that was possible. Three days into the journey, they done celebrated, they done danced, and now they got a little parched. We, now we, we need some refreshment. Like we, we thirsty. Now we run into another water problem. And they came to this place and the water was bitter. The water was bitter. And I think that's a lot of places where we find ourselves, right? We come to a place where we find things that are supposed to sustain us and give us life, but we find that that place is bitter. How many people have reached that place where this, is a, this relationship is supposed to give me life? This, this, this a job, this school, this whatever is supposed to give me life, but now I find in a place, this place is bitter. It's not what I thought it was going to be. It doesn't taste like I thought it would taste. And we tend to forget about God all the times God did come through. Yes, yes, now, this is just our, our human. This is what we do in our humanness. We tend to forget. They literally just forgot that they crossed the Red Sea. They just got rescued. They just got free from bondage. They forgot the same God who did it then. Could do it. And I, 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 you know, it's, it's easy to look at these verses and be like, mm, 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 look at the children. No, we do the same thing. We get into these places and then we forget who God is. And we, we, we really think God brings us into places to kill us. Like, ah, now I done, took a, I done took a step of faith and now I ain't got no rent. Now I ain't going to. We just think that God is out to get us. But we have to remember everything God has done for us in the past. What was the solution? God said, hey, Moses, there's a tree over there. Put the tree in the water. The water became sweet. Now, it turns out in verse 25 that it was only a test. Somebody say it's only a test. Come on, say it's only a test. See, it turned into a test. God said, um, you know, I was just testing you. I just wanted to see what your reaction is going to be. God is still looking for reactions from his people. Yeah. Looking to see, will there be a faithful reaction to things that are going on in your life? I have a question. If you were to receive a grade for how you've handled the pandemic so far, what grade would you get? Come on, say it got quiet in the house right here. I don't know why if it got quiet online. What grade would you have gotten over the pandemic if God was handing out report cards, a progress report over this last year and a half? Okay, and this is what you would have been graded on. You'd be graded on your mouth. How if you what came out your mouth, your complaints, and then uh, your ability to remember God's faithfulness and provisions. What kind of grade would you have got? Put it in the chat. If you, what, 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 what's on your report card? Mm, okay, okay. Because it matters what you say about God in this season. Do y'all hear me? It matters what you're saying about God in this season. The Bible says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be continually be in my mouth. Do you know what that means? That means that when he says, I will bless the Lord, I will always speak well of the Lord in good times and bad times, ups and downs. I will speak well of God. How did you do so far in the pandemic? <laughs> All right. We got some good grades out here and then we got some A's. OK, well, I'm glad for those who got an A because the children of Israel got an F. They got an F. They failed. They failed this test miserably. 
but God still provided. Isn't that good to know that even when we mess up, God is still looking out for us? Because after the test, God provided feedback. Y'all ever get took a test and then the teacher write all on the test, yeah, told you yeah. what you did and what you didn't do? Well, this is what God did to the children of Israel. Provided feedback. And he said, check it out. I'm going to give you a condition. If you do this, I'll do this. If you do that, I'll do that. He said, if you listen carefully, do what's right, pay attention to my commands, and keep all my degrees. Yes. That was a lot of ifs, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, then, you know what? I won't do you like I did the Egyptians. I won't inflict what I put. Remember the 10 plagues? Y'all remember Sunday school? All the plagues and all the things. He said, I won't do that to you if you listen to me. Because all the Egyptians had to do was to listen. When God said, let them go, they should have just been like, all right, bye. Y'all need help packing. But because of their hard heartedness, God had to show out. Because of their hard heartedness, God had to show out and show his glory and show everybody that I speak frog. I speak lies. I speak. I can speak all kind of languages. Y'all didn't even think I knew. And I sense the place. So God's like, look, it don't have to go down like that between us. We don't even have to go that route. If you just listen to me, do what's right and obey. All right. So I just gave you this context. Now we're going to get into the meat of it. At the end of verse 26, God introduces God's self in a new facet, a a new dimension that we haven't seen in Scripture up to this point. God introduces uh, God's self and says, I am the God who heals you. God introduced himself as Jehovah Rapha. It's the first time it's seen in Scripture, Jehovah Rapha. Rapha. If you take a note, this would be a good sermon to take notes on. I'm just saying. Uh, Jehovah Rapha, uh, Jehovah is derived from the Hebrew word Hava, which can be translated to be or to exist or to become known. Jehovah, Jehovah. And Rapha means, check it out, to heal, to cure, restore, yes. or make whole. Yes. To mend by stitching or to repair. I don't think y'all heard me. Rafa means to heal, cure, restore, make whole, to mend by stitching or to repair. My friends, this is who God is. Do you hear me? The God who heals. The healing is not just what God does. Healing is who God is. Do you get this? It's God's nature to heal. This is his character. There's nothing broken in God. Can you, can we are imagining, let's reimagine God. This is, this is God's essence. It's the core of who God is. God heals. And check it out. God's not moody. God's not inconsistent. God's not sometimey. God's not like just sprinkling here. Oh, oh, we're going to hold on that one. Wait, we're going to hold on that one. But God's not just sprinkling, um, you know, drops here or there. Like, I might heal you. I might not heal you. I would heal you. That's not God's character. But we tend to think that God's withholding healing from us or you got to have enough faith. You just didn't have enough faith. If you had enough faith, God would have activated. You got to activate your faith. You got to speak it. We come up with all these formulas when really healing is who God is. God loves to heal. God's full of compassion. God's full of love and mercy. This is who God is. Now, I want you to think about this. This is God's constant. God's not going up and down, wavering. This is God's constant. God is always healing. Say that with me. God is always healing. This is God's constant. Just as like, just like God is good all the time. Just like God is love. This is the same thing. God is a healer and God is always healing. It's his constant. Now, God wants to heal our bodies in every sense of the word, but not just physically, but emotionally and physically and spiritually. I want you to notice in this passage that nobody was sick yet. 
Y'all, y'all get me? Check out the timeline. We just crossed the Red Sea three days into the journey. They found the bitter water. God says this degree. Now check it out. If you listen to me, you won't get sick. Y'all won't give you what the Egyptians got. Nobody was sick yet. So God is telling them, forewarning them, and check out. Maybe God is just, he was healing mindsets. They wasn't sick in their body yet. Nothing happened to them. God was healing their mindsets. God was healing that already. I'm still stuck in Egypt. I'm still have that oppressional view of myself. I still have, I still feel colonized. I still I don't see myself as whole. I still see myself as a slave. I still see myself in bondage, even though I'm free. God out here healing mindsets. He doesn't just want to heal. He wants to heal our body, but he wants to make us whole. Remember, Jesus always said to somebody, do you want to be made whole? Yes. That's, that was always the question. Do you want to be made whole? So rather than just healing the body, Jehovah Rapha heals the mind and the soul as well. Yes. The Hebrew verb uh, used in, this, in Jehovah Rapha means that God even heals land. He heals water. He heals nations. God repairs altars. God heals the backslider. God heals sin. God heals apostasy. God is always healing. Come on, somebody put that in the chat. God is always healing. This is God's nature. And then we could put that, uh, that, that slide up. This is y'all extra credit. For those who want extra credit on today, this is a beautiful example with scripture reference of all the different ways God wants to heal us physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. I wish I had time to talk about each one of them and we could just preach it all day, but I figure y'all want to go to brunch or something. So we just going to put it up there and then y'all can do what you want. I, I recommend you watch the, I mean, look at this and, and read it throughout the week. Whatever you, wherever you need healing, why don't you let God do a work? So I feel the question. I feel it. Y'all ain't said nothing, but I feel the question. If God is healer, then why don't we see healing more often? I feel, I feel y'all saying it. It's all right. I, we re, we here for it. I say the same thing. Anybody honest in here? Why don't we see? Why is it so much suffering? Why are we in a pandemic? Why are things happening to the good people? You know, we, we might be okay if it was just the bad people getting, getting sick. But how many know we all been the bad person? <laughs> so, so you can't just say we all been uh, played the role of the villain at some time. So uh, anybody with me? Am I making this up? Do you feel like that sometimes? Why is there so much healing? Why is there so much suffering if God indeed is a healer? Well, let's take a trip. We're going to take a trip back to the garden. Y'all want to go back? Let's go back to the Garden of Eden, to our original state. Remember when everything uh, was in a state of unbroken fellowship with God. There was wholeness. Back in the Garden of Eden, there was no sickness. There was no pain. There were no tears. It's just complete wholeness with God. Just walking in fellowship. This is what God always wanted. He just wanted to make humans to hang out with him and just be among us. That's God's dream. I just want to be with y'all. I love y'all. And then, as we know, sin entered into the world. And that separated us from God and introduced brokenness. Okay, so through, y'all know the scripture, through one man's sin, sin entered into the world. So now, humankind has an hereditary sin condition. We live in a fallen world. We live in a fallen world. And that shows up in our bodies. It shows up in our minds. It shows up in accidents. Yeah. It shows up with, with people take, using their free will to do evil. Yeah. All this shows up because now we're in a fallen state. It's hereditary. We're all born in sin. Once that happened, it's like we all have cancer. We all, it keeps passing down, passing down, passing down. So now sin and brokenness and diseases and all those things are part of the human condition. Life happens to everybody. Amen? Amen. 
Y'all, anybody had life happen to you? I don't care. Anybody in the, in the, in the live stream, that life, life just happens. It doesn't matter who you are, whether you're doing good, you're doing bad, you're up, you're down, you're reading your Bible every day, or you ain't touched it in, in a year. Life happens to everybody. That's why we have to continue to pray, Lord, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Because what's going on in heaven? There's no sickness. There's no pain. There's no tears. There's no diseases. So we are, we're always praying, God, bring heaven down to earth. Bring it down to this brokenness. So then we were in a dilemma. We were stuck because we are, we are broken fellowship with God. God can't be with us the way we want. We have sin running rampant. We got diseases now. We are in a dilemma. We, it, it was, it was, we were in a bad spot as humans. But that's where Jesus comes in. Somebody say, thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Can somebody just say, thank God for Jesus? Because this is where Jesus stepped into history. And let me tell you, y'all remember that tree that, uh, that Moses put in the water? Y'all remember that in, in, the, in the verse? God said, put a, a tree in the water and the water turns sweet. Do y'all know that that was a shadow of the cross? Do y'all know that was a shadow of the cross? It was because of the tree, the cross of Calvary, the work that Jesus did on the cross that took our sin condition, that took our bitter condition, that took the bitterness out of our lives and our soul. It was the tree. God was pointing towards Jesus and said, this will be the cure. This is what's going to make life sweet. God knew we couldn't keep all them commandments. He told them, folks, you know, he told them to keep the commands before they even got a command. I want you to look at the look at the history. They don't get the Ten Commandments until way later. They out on Mount Sinai. They are three days fresh on the journey. And God said, I want you to keep all the commandments. God, what? We ain't even got nothing yet. But it was for God was, was signaling to them, I'm going to give you some command. You ain't going to be able to keep it. You look through, if you ever read through Exodus and Numbers, they did horrible. They did like us. I ain't going to put it all on them. There's no way we can keep all of God's commandments apart from Jesus. It was to point us to the, to the fact that we needed a savior. You're not going to be able to do this on your own. You're not going to be able to keep all these laws. You can try. I'm going to put it up there just so you can fail miserably and you will know that you need help. You need a savior. So that's what happened at Calvary. Jesus removed the bitterness and the brokenness of sin. Galatians 3, 13 it will back me up. It says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Jesus became the curse. Jesus became the, the curse that we were supposed to, to, to handle. We were supposed to bear the brunt of. We were supposed to all die for our own sin. Jesus took the curse upon him when he died on the tree. He took our punishment. He took the bitterness out of our lives so that we could be healed. Do y'all know that Jesus became Jehovah Rapha in the flesh? When Jesus walked on earth, everyone who came to him was healed. Go look at it. Read it for yourself. He'll go to whole towns and everybody be healed. Anybody who walked up to Jesus left healed. Anybody who came to him was made whole. He was living Jehovah Rapha. Now, you might be like, okay, that's well and good. Okay, Jesus, Jehovah, got it. But how do we reconcile these two concepts? We still, you know, we're not in the Old Testament now. Jesus, we're living in a new dispensation because of the work of Jesus on the cross. We're New Testament saints living in a new, uh, a, a new uh, covenant. But there's still sickness and disease all around us. Amen? Amen. We are literally living in a pandemic as we speak. But even though Jesus, the finished work of Jesus on the cross, we believe it, it's been done. But how do we reconcile the two? 
How do, we, how do we say that God is a healer and Jesus has paid it all, but we're still dealing with conditions and sickness? And Have you ever wondered that? Like, how do we put these two together? Well, I just had three things, and I'm, I'm going to be out your way. Y'all could go eat. Um, three things. Uh, first thing I want you to remember, always remember our human condition. Now, this is very important. Remember that we are living in our human condition. So as long as and Pastor Mike said this so well, please go back and watch Wednesday's Bible study. Pastor Mike said this so well. As long as you are living in this body and as long as you are living in this flesh, there will always be something. Uh-huh. Y'all hear me? Even if God heals you of what you're praying for right now, the condition that you're wanting God to heal you from, even if God does that, guess what? Something else going to pop up a few more years from then. Some old age going to set in. Something's going to happen. You don't, you don't believe me? Ask Lazarus. Wow. Watch out. Ask Lazarus. Jesus healed this whole man from the dead. And that's never, that had never, like he was dead for like, what, four days and he came back to life. But what happened to Lazarus after that? We don't still, Lazarus is not still walking among us. Lazarus had to die. Lazarus died of something after Jesus healed him. Amen. Everyone who Jesus healed in the New Testament all died (laughs) eventually. I I hate to break it to you. I hate to break it to you, saints. Um, But... (laughs) But we all going to die of something. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Y'all hear me? We all going to die if something's going to take us out. They say everybody want to get to heaven, but nobody want to die. Well, That's what they... <laughs> everybody, everybody love heaven, but nobody want to die. I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but something, something going to take us out, saints. So when we're reconciling these two thoughts... Always keep in mind that we're living in a fallen human condition. Like something is always going to break down. It's the nature of earth until we get into eternity. Number two, remember past miracles. Now, I know we waiting on God to do something or you're waiting for a healing or you're praying for somebody. But please don't forget all the times God did come through. Don't forget all the miracles that you have seen. Don't forget when you did pray for somebody and they did feel better. Don't forget when you had a condition and then the doctor was like, well, you know what? You're going to be okay. Don't forget God's past. Sometimes we just see right, what's right in front of us, like the children of Israel, and we forget times past. To always thank God for what God has already done because if God can do it back then, he could do it again. God can do it again. God is faithful. He's perpetual in his faithfulness. And then the last thing, just to remember when you're trying to weigh these two concepts, see healing as a process. Yes. Pastor Mike yes. spoke about this so good. And I believe God is more concerned about this process than anything else. Remember, God, healing is easy for God. So God is healing. Healing is not the issue. The, the condition you're praying for or whatever you're, you're, you need healing for, whether it's in your mind, whether it's a, a, a wound, whether it's past hurt, whether it's mental illness, anxiety, depression, whether you got something going on in your body, remember that healing is a process. If I were to break my arm right now, even though I know saints, y'all got power, y'all can pray over this arm, but it's going to be about four to six weeks with the cast, and it's got to be set before it's healed. And we don't, sometimes, yes, God does heal immediately, but sometimes God wants our hearts more than this healing. God wants our dependence on him more than an immediate touch from God. See healing as a process. And I'm, 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 I'm going to be done after, I'm going to be out your way after this. But it says, uh, I just want you to see one thing about God, and I think this is going to change and restore your dynamic. I want you to go to Malachi 3 really quick. We're going to touch on this really quick. We're talking about the process of healing. This is God speaking. It says, um, who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like refiner's fire and fuller's salt. He will sit 
as a refiner and purifier of silver. He will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver and will bring and offerings of righteousness to the Lord. This verse is telling us that God sits as a refiner over our lives. Y'all know what a refiner is? Refiners is someone who takes something that's already good, gold or silver, comes out the earth, is automatically it's, it's worth money. Gold and silver is great when you first get it, uh, but a refiner takes it, puts heat on it, Puts it through fire, puts it through heat, and it takes out all the dross, all the impurities, and it makes it, the refiner makes it even better than it was before, and it, and, and it increases its value on it. Come on. A lot of us is like, we are, we, yes, God loves us just the way we are. We are raw silver and raw gold, and God does love us, but God sees so much more potential yeah. in you. God sees so much more that he wants to bring out of you. And can you just picture God sitting as a refiner over your life? Think about your healing process as a refining process that God is taking you through. It gets hot. Sometimes it turns up the heat, but perhaps God is pulling out impurities yes, yes, and making yes. you better yes. and increasing your value, yes. increasing your anointing, oh, increasing your power, oh, increasing oh, everything yeah. about you, your gifting so that you can be used yes. and have value over your life. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave you with this. First Peter 4, this one, First Peter 4, 12 through 13. I hope you all taking notes. It says, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you share Christ's sufferings that you may rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. Does this season feel like a fiery season right now? Does this pandemic feel fiery? Does it feel like God's turning up the heat in your life? Does it feel like problems are on every hand? Are you just thinking about going into shutdown again? Does that just do something to your heart? Don't let COVID surprise you. Don't let sickness surprise you. Don't let things in your life surprise you. Perhaps God is sitting as a refiner over your life. And then you're going through a healing process. And God says, yeah, I can heal you. That's no problem. But I want to I want to purify you. I want to take out impurities. I want to work on your attitude. I want to work on your your mouth. I want to work on how you respond to people. I want to work on your patience. I want to work on your perseverance. I need you to be able to pers persevere. I need you to be able to go through. I'm making you as fire, I'm putting you through the fire. So while you're waiting for your miracle, sit in that fire. Let God refine you. God is not withholding healing from you. God's not withholding. It's going to get hot. They said it's getting hot in here, but don't take off your clothes. God's not withholding healing from you. God is taking you through a process, and when you come out, you will be as pure gold. Come on. Back at they used to have the old song, please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. And what it say? When God gets through with me, I shall come forth as pure gold. This is the process. God is a healer. God is a healer. God's always healing. But maybe you're asking God to touch your shoulder. He's like, but I want to touch your mind. God, I want you to take away this condition. Yeah, but I want to put more love in you. God, I want you to heal my foot. Yeah, I want to heal your foot, but I want to give you peace. God's always healing. Just because he's not answering what you think is your immediate need, know that, God, if you're not healing my foot, then you're healing my mind. If you're not healing my mind, then you're healing something. You're always, you're always healing. This is who you are. Hallelujah. So here are just a couple of takeaways. Uh, you can take talk with your friends or your loved ones. You can take a picture. You could take a screenshot. You go back and rewind and watch it later. But these are just three takeaways. 
Where in your life do you need to restore your view of Jehovah Jireh? Where did you lose it? Where did you stop believing that God can heal because of disappointments or just because you just haven't seen it or you're just living with a condition or just something? Where do you need God to re restore it? And what past miracles of healing can you bring to mind? When did God come through? When, did, when was God faithful to you? And just know that God is constant. God will never not be faithful. And the last one, how is God refining you in your healing process? How is God refining you? I know it's getting hot. I know it's heated. I know it's uncomfortable. Shout out to Sister Olivia. We had to talk about sitting in uncomfortable situations. But just know that you're resting in, in, in loving hands. That God's attitude towards you is that always, God always, just how God, Jesus had compassion over the people, God always has compassion over you and your situation, over your loved one. God loves you. But God's doing a greater work a lot of times than what we can see. So if everyone, people who are in the room, if y'all could just stand with me. We just want to take a time just to, just to pray. Are you watching online? Let's just take a moment and posture yourself to pray. And can we just begin to worship God as a healer? Can you just begin to worship Jehovah Rapha? God, we thank you that you are a healer. This is who you are. It's the essence of your character. God, we're sorry for all the times that we've doubted this aspect, this dimension of you because of our experiences. But God, will you restore our hearts? Will you restore our minds towards you? Will you help us to see who you are? God, that you're always healing. You're always constant in your healing. And God, even though with the we have our own mind and our own will, and we want you to do things on our agenda sometimes, but today we submit it to you. God, we give you the conditions, the diseases, this pandemic. God, I would pray for uh, anyone out there who has a condition. If you feel so moved, can you just put uh, what you're praying for in the chat? If you need a healing, if you need God to heal something or a person or a loved one, can you just begin to put it in the chat? We have leaders here who will pray over you. We have people on the chat who will pray for you. God, we just believe that you will heal. We, we, we yield to the process. However you want to do it, God. However you want to heal us. God, touch our minds. God, even us who have healing mentally from past things and past betrayals and past, uh, past wounds. And God, will you begin to pour your oil into those wounds? God, emotionally, mentally, physically, in our spirits. God, some people just need a touch in their spirit. God, heal. Heal us. And if, you, if you're believing God for a condition, will you just begin to do something that you couldn't do before? If you had problems with your legs or your arms, or just begin to do something that you couldn't do before. And we're just going to believe that God's going to move and heal. God, we submit to you. We submit to the process. We believe you. And we say we trust you. We trust you with our lives. We trust you with our bodies, with our spirit. And God, we just want to thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We love you. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And thank God. If you're watching here and you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, this is a good day to get to know the one who took every stripe for you. By his stripes, we are healed. So if you don't know Jesus, can you just ask Jesus to come into your life? Say, Lord, I, I ask you, come into my life. Change me. Make me who you want me to be. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, family, thank you for being with us another Sunday. Thank you for worshiping with us. And we just pray that you will continue to see God as a healer. Don't forget to log on Wednesday night, Bible study. Pastor Mike is doing a whole series on healing, and it is so good. So go to our website so you know how to register. Thank you to the leaders and family and friends who are here in the building. We love you the way, family. Have a wonderful week.